Hey everyone, as part of last week's video, I was asked whether or not I thought that EV charging speeds would ever match uh, normal gasoline vehicle fill-up speeds. And I answered by saying that it was a complex topic that really deserved its own brief video. And, well, this is that video. That said, I'm not exactly an expert in lithium-ion battery chemistry. So instead, what I'm going to focus on are the other technical challenges associated with really high-speed charging. There will be a little bit of math involved, but don't worry, it's not that scary, I promise. Let's get to it. First, let's go over the assumptions that I'm using to set up this hypothetical. I'll be assuming a car with a 75 kilowatt hour battery, that's 75 kilowatt hours usable, um, and of a chemistry that can accept whatever amount of power we decide to throw at it. I'll be ignoring the charge curve phenomenon that occurs with lithium chemistry batteries, so I'll be talking about average power rather than like the peak power which occurs early in the charge cycle uh, and then gradually declines. I'll be assuming 100% efficiency to make the math cleaner and also because I don't really have any data about how much energy is lost uh, across the, uh, the actual hookup equipment for the DC charging standards. For the later part of the, uh, the hypothetical, I'll be assuming that all charging stalls at a charging station deliver the same amount of power, that way everyone is guaranteed the same charge times. And I'll be comparing both the current 400 volt DC and a potential future 800 volt DC fast charging standard. Now when I said that the math was simple, I really wasn't kidding. The only equation that I'll be using here is P equals IV, power equals current times voltage. When most people talk about electric vehicle charging times, they tend to be referring to uh, the 0 to 100% charge time, which, I mean, that's not really something you do very frequently, but since that's what most people seem to talk about, we'll start there. So with the current 400 volt standard and a 0 to 100% charge cycle, 75 kilowatt hours divided by 5 minutes is equal to 4,500 kilowatt minutes divided by 5 minutes gives us 900 kilowatts because the minutes cancel and you're just left with 5 and 4500. To deliver 75 kilowatt hours to a car in 5 minutes, you would need to have an average charge power of 900 kilowatts. Remember, Tesla's current vehicles can't accept more than 120 kilowatts, so that is a tremendous amount of power. However, to get a complete picture of the hardware challenges involved, we need to figure out how much current is actually being driven through this. Let's see, so 900 kilowatts is our power, going back to P equals IV here, and we want to find current, and we know our voltage. So 900 kilowatts equals I, which is what we want to solve for, times 400 volts. Since we're solving for I, all we have to do is divide 900,000, because P in this equation is in watts, not kilowatts. So 900 kilowatts is 900,000 watts, so you divide 900,000 by 400, 400 volts, which gives you, let's see, I equals 2,250 amps. So charging that 75 kilowatt hour electric vehicle from 0% to 100% in 5 minutes would require an average power of 900 kilowatts, which at 400 volts DC means 2,250 amps. Let that sink in for a second. Now if we were to do the same thing with a hypothetical 800 volt system, going from 0% to 100%, the wattage doesn't change. What will change, however, is the current required to do it. Um, and so, we would just be looking at 900 kilowatts equals I times 800 volts. Again, we're solving for I, so you divide 900,000 by 800, which gives us I equals 1,125 amps, which is half of the current required to do it at 400 volts. That's a little better, but still pretty scary. Now, a more realistic scenario for long distance travel would be arriving at a charging station at, say, a 10% state of charge, and then needing to charge up to 80% to make it to the next charging station. 
So let's see what this looks like if we're going from 10% to 80%. Again, we're talking average power, so we're ignoring charge curve. Charging from 10% to 80% is basically applying a 70% state of charge boost. So we're gonna start by taking 75 kilowatt hours and multiplying that by 0 0.7 to give us the amount of power in kilowatt hours we're going to need to deliver in five minutes. So in this case, 75 times 0.7 gives us 52.5 kilowatt hours. Just like last time, we're going to take the amount of power we have to deliver, which in this case is 52.5 kilowatt hours, and we're going to divide that by five minutes, just like last time, which equals 3,150 kilowatt minutes divided by five minutes equals 630 kilowatts. So to charge that hypothetical 75 kilowatt hour battery from 10% to 80%, again, assuming no charge curve, would require an average power delivery of 630 kilowatts for five minutes. That is still a tremendous amount of power to deliver to a car. But let's see where that uh, puts us in terms of current. So again, like last time, we have 630 kilowatts and we want to find out how much current we need to drive. So 630 kilowatts times I times 400 volts. So this time we're not dealing with 900 kilowatts here, we got 630. So 630,000 divided by 400 gives us I equals 1,575 amps. That's still a crazy amount of current, but it's still more reasonable than where we were just a moment ago. Now, if we were to go to a hypothetical 800 volt system, uh, as I showed up here, basically by doubling the voltage, you're cutting the current required in half. That would mean that our current requirement would be 787, 787.5 amps. 787 and a half amps is still a tremendous amount of current, but you can see we're starting to move in the right direction here. So let's take that five minute charge requirement and let's turn it into a 10 minute charge requirement and we'll keep the 800 volt charging system and see where this puts us. 52, uh, five, two, I can draw numbers. Yeah, I can do that. 52 and a half kilowatt hours divided by 10 minutes equals 3,150 kilowatt minutes divided by 10 minutes, and I'm getting off the, the paper here, so I jumped down the line, equals 315 kilowatts. I'm sure some of you are looking at that 315 kilowatt number there and going, wait a minute, I've seen something like that before, and you're right because Tesla and a few other companies have been talking about developing charging systems that could deliver 315, 325, 345 plus kilowatts of power. Now they're talking peak power and I'm talking average power here, but it, it starts to come into focus that this may be possible in the near future, charging a 75 kilowatt hour car from 10% to 80% in 10 minutes. For the sake of completeness, let's look at how much uh, current that would require. So 315 kilowatt equals I times 800 volts. And so again, same as last time, 315,000 divided by 800 gives us I equals 393.75 amps. Again, still a lot of current, but uh, definitely within the realm of possibility and nowhere near as complicated logistically to deliver as say, you know, nearly 800 amps or, or any of these other options. So where do these hypothetical scenarios put us as far as large scale charging stations are concerned? Well, let's consider the typical 10 stall supercharger station that you'd find in California. As I mentioned earlier, we're gonna assume that there is no stall pairing going on and that every car can charge at the same speed and needs the same amount of power. Our first scenario 
was a 0% to 100% in five minutes. We ran the numbers and determined that it would require an average power of 900 kilowatts. So let's say the charging station is full. You have 10 cars that arrived with 0% charge and they need to go from zero to 100 in five minutes. All right, so 900 kilowatts per car times 10 stalls equals nine megawatts. Continuing on down the line of our hypothetical scenarios, our next was 10% to 80% in five minutes, which required 630 kilowatts for five minutes times 10 cars is 6.3 megawatts for the whole station. If the power demand for these three hypothetical 10 stall superchargers sounds like a lot, it's because it is. Um, but there are some options moving forward to make uh, the, the construction of such sites a little more feasible. One of the options would be to put large scale battery storage on site to meet the peak power demands of the charging station. Uh, that way you wouldn't require a really massive grid tie. Uh, which itself would be expensive and you'd have to deal with demand charges on top of that. So it'd be very expensive just for that station to exist. And when you consider that they do not spend most of their time at peak power, uh, most of the time they're idle and empty, uh, the battery storage option seems fairly attractive. Additionally, avoiding the requirement of a really massive grid tie and using those batteries to actually meet your peak demands uh, makes placement of these sorts of large charging installations a lot more flexible. Because let's face it, you aren't going to be able to get, you know, a, a six and a half megawatt grid tie just anywhere. Aside from the charging station's electrical requirements, the previous exercise also gives us the information necessary to figure out how unwieldy uh, connectors or cable bundles would be to actually link your car to the power source to be able to charge it that quickly. Let's see how big those cable bundles would actually need to be to meet the goals set out in our previous exercise. I'm not gonna cover the zero to 100% in five minutes scenario uh, because the conductor and connector sizes and just the bundle size for that would be truly ridiculous. Uh, so I'm gonna start with the 10% uh, to 80% uh, 400 volt five minute example. In that 10% to 80% 400 volt uh, scenario, we determined uh, that you'd have to be able to pass 1,575 amps to the car while it's charging. In order to do so, at least from a continuous power standpoint, which I, I know realistically that's not really what we're dealing with here, but uh, from a continuous power standpoint to deliver that much current, you'd need like something on the order of uh, like uh, two parallel 2000 MCM uh, conductors uh, on both the positive and negative to be able to deliver that. So we're talking about a wire bundle that would be somewhere in the ballpark of like five and a half inches, 5.6 inches in diameter. So what does that look like? Well, it looks something like this. So I'll go ahead and trace this here. There's our hypothetical wire bundle for 1575 amps. So yeah, not really practical. That would be a lot like plugging a coffee can into your car. Next up, we had the 10% to 80% 800 volt in five minutes. And that looks something like this, given that it would likely require, again, from a continuous standpoint, something like two parallel 600 uh, MCM conductors on the positive and the negative, which would give a wire bundle of somewhere in the ballpark of like 3.1-ish inches. Now let's compare that to our 10% to 80% uh, 800 volt in 10 minutes. As we determined earlier, that requires about 393.75 amps, and uh, again, looking at this from a continuous standpoint, that could be accomplished with a single 500 MCM uh, conductor on both the, the, uh, the positive and negative, obviously, which gives us a wire bundle in the one and a half inch uh, range. Again, insulation and other things uh, will impact the actual diameter of the cable bundle, but that would give us something about like this. When you compare these to each other, the 10% uh, to 80% 800 volt 10 minute, the 800 volt five minute and uh, 400 volt five minute, 
this is looking a lot more realistic, isn't it? So yeah, that's kind of my answer. I mean, I can I can definitely see um, fast charging getting close. So the, the 10 minute example that I gave on the 800 volt system, I can see that becoming a reality very soon. Um, so like easily next few years, perhaps. And you already have companies like Tesla and a couple others that have been talking about 325 plus kilowatt charging. So it's in the works, that's going to happen. Uh, the trick will be coming up with a battery chemistry that can handle that kind of charge rate. Going much faster than that, however, um, introduces a lot of extra challenges just in delivering power to the car. And so I'm not exactly sure how, how companies will go about solving that or addressing that or if they will. You know, I'm not going to try to predict what, what the next uh, paradigm shift in technology is going to be, because that's, well, usually a, a losing game. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Don't forget to post your questions and comments below, rate and subscribe, and all that wonderful stuff. Uh, and I'll see you guys later.